Hi, good afternoon and welcome to our meditation. Today it's a Sunday meditation because today is the 22nd of August. I would like to read in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 6, uh, verse 1. Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of the repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, instruction about cleansing rites, the laying, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, the eternal judgment. Interesting because he's talking to these people about to be uh, take for, uh, taken forward to maturity. It is important to go forward to maturity. And then he's got a list of teachings here that for most of us, we would call them uh, deep teachings. And he said, these, these are elementary things, the foundation. But now we have to walk forward, to go forward. Lots of people like uh, talking, Christians like talking about the end of times. And he said, these are just found. This is element, elementary things. We have to go f deeper into our faith. We know that God, is, Jesus, is coming back again. We don't know when, and uh, we are waiting for, his, for him to come back. But uh, some churches, they base all their doctrine on the end of times. And they're going to f have all these three years of that, three and a half, seven years, 1,000 years. I mean, this is, we shouldn't waste our time in trying to, to understand if he's coming tomorrow, who is going to be the Antichrist. He's saying this is elementary teachings. We have to keep on going forward. And then he's going to, to say something that uh, in, in three verses here that are considered the most uh, difficult v verses for some people in the Bible. And people are going to use this text to say, wow, you can lose your salvation. Can we really lose our salvation? Is there a sin that God cannot forgive? John chapter 10, verse 28 to 30, Jesus is going to say this, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Who is no one? It is no one. The devil cannot do it. Yourself cannot do it. The world cannot do it. An angel cannot do it. My father who has given them to me is greater than, than now. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. And then he says, I and the father are one. So salvation here is called eternal life. And Jesus is saying, I give eternal life to my people. Nobody can snatch it out of it's not, it's not to them. Take them out of my hands. So let's read these three verses that uh, are, for some, very complicated. It's verse 4, 5, and 6 of Hebrews chapter 6. It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, and to have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the powers of the coming age, and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. To their loss, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting him to public, public disgrace. There is a story in the Old Testament about this, the brother of uh, Jacob, and uh, he rejected the inheritance that was his by law, by right. And he rejected it. And then later on, when he wanted to get it back, there was no repentance in his heart. He couldn't get it back. Does it mean that God doesn't forgive sin? Some people say that there are some great big sins that God cannot forgive. But that's not true. Because the wages of sin is death. It could be great sin or a small sin because to God, sin is sin. What is this text is talking about? the text about the brother of Jacob, is that there was no repentance in him. It doesn't mean that God couldn't forgive him. He, the person who wrote Hebrew, is going to tell us a parable, two or one. The first parable is about the land that drinks from the water. Land that drinks in the rain, often falling on it, and, that, and produce a crop useful to those for whom it's farmed, receives the blessing of God. The other parable is the parable of the land that produces thorns and thistles and is worthless 
and it is in danger of being cursed. In the end, it will be burned. Two lands. Are you receiving the rain of heaven? Some people, like in chapter 4, 5, and 6, that there they are eating from, uh, from the table of the Lord. Like in, in John chapter 6, Jesus gave uh, fish and bread to, to all those thousands of people. The next day, they cross the, the lake, they go to the other side of the lake, Jesus is preaching there, they are listening to the message of Jesus, and then at the end they say, this message is too difficult, and they leave. And Jesus asks, he asks his disciples, what about you? And Peter says something that is very important. He says, to whom can we go? You are the one who has the words of eternal life. We are talking about eternal life here. Salvation is eternal life. Once you have really understood, you have really received the Spirit of God, how can you crucify Christ again? How can you? And this, the parable here, the two parables here, show that some land, they are just producing thorns, and the other one is being blessed. What sort of land are you? Are you just a Christian because your parents are Christian? Christians, or your grandparents are Christians, or are you a Christian because you have received eternal life? Listen to what chapter 6 verse 9 says, even though we speak like this, dear friends, we are convinced of better things in your case, the things that have to do with salvation. Better things is a very important uh, thing here, and you are going to find it in the whole book of Hebrews. Better, superior. We are talking about things that are superior. We are talking about things that are better. Not just being a religious person, not just being a Christian because you were born in a Christian family. No, you are a Christian because you have received eternal life. And in verse 10, he talks about the love, the agape love, not the, your father's love, your brother's love, your girlfriend's love, your wife's love. No, the love of God. That makes all the difference here. It's the same love that, according to Paul in Romans chapter 5, has been given us by the Holy Spirit. Amazing. And I would like to finish with the, the end, at the end of the text. It says in verse 18, God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take a hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. And then if you are curious, you are going to ask, uh, uh, what things are these? What two things are these? When you read the whole ta chapter 6 and the whole book of Hebrews and the whole Bible, you realize that he's talking about the nature of God and the promises of God. He says that in verse 16, people swear by someone greater than themselves. And the oath confirms that it is said and it puts an end to an all argument. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs, to the heirs of what, he, what was promised, he confirmed it with an oath. God has done it on himself. We have this hope says the, the person who wrote the book at the end, verse 19, as an anchor for the soul. Firm and secure, it enters the, the inner sanctuary behind the curtains, where our forerunner, Jesus, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. So what you have received in Christ is firm because Christ has introduced you in the holy places. That's where you are, in the heavenly places. How can you lose it? How can you lose it once you have received it? God is going to do everything for you to arrive because in Christ you have already arrived. God bless you.